And Brother Rivera? Keep praising him. Keep praising him. Yes, he really is a loving Savior, and he is, and he is still, King of King and Lord of Lords. Regardless of all of the conspiracies and regardless of all the imitations, we are still seeing his glory. Praise his name. Now, let me I invite you to turn with me to the book of Revelation chapter 6 because we will be rushing and trying to conclude this evening on this prophetical series of testimonies that I have brought to you this day as part of the conviction of the Holy Spirit by which I came to be free. I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Chapter 6 of the book of Revelation. Now, may I remind you that as I repeat and I emphasize throughout this week that these particular teachings in the scripture, especially in the book of Revelation, were those teachings that brought me into freedom from the very judgments and curses here prophesied. As we, you will see this evening, you now are watching the third horse in the book of Revelation. That is the third circle. And that is the black horse, the rider and the horse and the commissions given to that rider. The commissions to fulfill as being fulfilled in our days now. We are facing it as never before. We are most grateful to God that allow us to preach the gospel. We are privileged people. We are peculiar people. And let me tell you that I know what I'm talking about. Because I was deprived from such a privilege, not only knowing but preaching and teaching the greatest revelation of God. I was deprived for 27 years while I was a Jesuit priest. Yes, I am so privileged to be here, especially with you during all this week. I have learned to love you and I have learned now to know you. And I'll keep you in my prayers as I go wherever the Lord called me to serve him. Yes, but I have always memory before the Lord of your pastor, Tony Alamo. I pray for him constantly that the Lord enable him to keep serving him with more boldness every day as he is doing and as is being already feared by the most powerful forces in earth, the Vatican. Certainly, there is fear. And not because Tony Alamo or Alberto or any one of you as a Christian serving the Lord Jesus Christ. The fear of the Vatican is because we know who is Jesus Christ. And knowing him, that is what the Vatican fear. That is what the Vatican fear most. They fear most those who know truly Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Yes, he know and the Pope know truly who is he. There is no doubt about it. Some people said maybe he don't know what he is doing. Oh, he better know what he is doing. Let me tell you that once he received the title to as Vicarius Philly Day, he knows what he's doing. He is taking the place, if he could, if he, he could, the place of Jesus Christ. But even so, that they try so hard, as you can see from the beginning of this prophetical series, even so that they have tried so far and so hard to perform this imitation, they have gone really far, but they never, they will never be able to fulfill. They will never replace, they will never be able to imitate, they will never be able to take, much less, the place of Jesus Christ. The Lord has granted only one person to take his place in his absence, and that is the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Yes, 
when we know the things and the enemy know that we know then they fear they really fear I'm very grateful I feel sad that I have to depart at least for now I feel sad that I have to depart from among you and we've been blessed we have seen the glory of the Lord and we have seen salvation brought to many souls during these days and I pray for all those who have come forward and without shame they have come to confess the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and Redeemer. Yes, this is the only hope of salvation. He is the only hope of salvation. Let's now read in Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6 and now verse 5. And when he have opened the third seal, I hear the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him have a pair of balances in his hands. And I hear a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, I am a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now this third horse with the rider on it have a special commission. And is a twofold commission. We now know by the color that each color symbolizes precisely different flags. It's interesting, not only one. But every one of them symbolize a flag, an international flag. And the first white horse, you see, is a combination of the white with the pale, the four horse that we will get into after the third horse. And that color, these two colors, this combination, make up one flag that is well known, more known every day, and is becoming more relevant, that flood, than any other flood in the entire world. As a matter of fact, this flood has been seen in places and countries where it never was seen even before. For instance, United States of America. In this country, that particular flood was never intended to be seen, not even waving in a building. But today, it's not only in many buildings, is not only waving in buildings, is waving in the streets of the United States every time that a Pope visits this country. And you see this flag next to the flag of the United States of America waving and welcome the Pope, the Antichrist. Certainly, that flag is white and pale. And white and pale are the colors of the first horse, the papacy, and of the fourth horse, the Roman Catholic institution is the color of liturgy, while the white is the color of holiness of that so-called Christ on earth that is no other than the same personification of the spirit of the Antichrist, the Pope himself. He dressed white, not only, but he assumed one of his titles, Holy Father. Certainly, we wonder many times about the color red, and many of you already know, and that was the international flood of communism. And then you have the black that we are to reveal this evening, and that is the international flag of the Jesuit order. But it's interesting that as there is a combination between white and pale to make out the international flag of the Vatican waving now 24 hours around the clock in the United Nations yes, it's there already then we have another combination between red and black and you see even so that the international flag of the international communism is solid red, nevertheless, in every communist country there is symbols in that solid red flag, there is one color they use when they want to have a symbol on that flag, and that they use black color. And the Jesuit flag being solid black have red 
in it with the symbols of death. There is a combination among H1. But the third combination, and that is how powerful the Holy Spirit has made such a detailed revelation of these hidden secrets, of this hidden conspiracy and this hidden conspirator, that when you get all these three colors together, white, red, black, and you mix it, you come out with one color, pale. Interesting. Chemistry. Praise the Lord. We are surrounded by all kind of proofs and evidence. Wherever you go, if you are still down about proofs and evidence, and you are still bound to opinions and reasons, then it's time for you to get free. It's time for you to come out from your confusion and let the Lord Jesus Christ reign over you. That is how you can settle the matter of confusion, because that is what you complain about many times. It's too much confusion. I'll tell you what I settled in my own confusion, and was a great confusion. You can see by what the devil make of my life before I met Christ, I have enough reasons to be confused. And I got with me all the degrees that could enlighten in the midst of confusion. But the more degrees that I got, sociology, theology, philosophy, logic, psychology, you name it. Psychoanalysis, you name it. I became more confused and not less. But Jesus Christ settled the matter when he made me free, entirely free, truly free. Listen to this. The black horse, with the rider in him, have a manifestation in history. There was a man called Ignatius of Loyola. And precisely, he came to be, as Revelation chapter 13 talk about, precisely the image of one of the beast. Yes, that false prophet, because he was a prophet, nevertheless he was the greatest false prophet ever known to men. Ignatius of Loyola, being the founder of the Illuminati, before he became the founder of the Society of Jesus, the Company of Jesus, the Jesuit Order, before he was forced to switch from the Illuminati into the Jesuit Order, in 1541, when already the Inquisition went after him and discovered his secret and his secret meetings about the Illuminati in Spain and his castle, the inquisitors already condemned Ignatius of Loyola to die by burning, to die at the stake, because they found him committing heresies. But he came out. He called upon his members of the Illuminati order, among others, either, even as a matter of fact, Charles V, Philip II, and many others, kings and emperors and princes and countess and duchess all over Europe, members of that Illuminati order that he had and he established. He called upon those who had the power, the political power, and said, there is what is going, they're going to do with me. They are expecting that they will do with you the same thing. If you don't help me, I have to talk, I have to say, and the inquisitors will do it. The inquisitors will get Philip II, they will get Charles V, they will get anyone. They will crush anyone because they did it. They burn alive kings and princes and duchess and counters, regardless of their rank. The Pope have the decree, the Jesuit oral approve it, then everything was on the way. That after the Jesuit came and function. But before the Dominicans have that power, the Dominican order. Oh, you thought there was Philip II army. <laughs> that is what Bishop Shim used to say and what he did to disturb even the American history not only, but universal history. That child of the devil, he dare in a country like this to speak on televisions about the Inquisition, calling then, as the Pope did in Spain, a terrible tragedy. A terrible tragedy that the church could not handle 
and that the church could not do nothing about. Now, when Bishop Sheen spoke about this, that was many years ago. It was not even today. Many years ago. And what we see today, you can imagine how drunk this country came to be under the wine of the fornication of this great horror. How drunk this country came to be that he will speak on television and to radio and publish a book on that issue. And American people will not even say anything about. Pastors will not say anything about. Preachers will not even mention. Evangelists will not even touch it. And that was about 20 years ago, beloved. Now you can see how drunk it is now. That even more horrifying things are being said. More horrifying things are taking place before the eyes of this nation. Right now. And very little people said anything about Very little people, very few do think anything about It's taking place. Yes, listen well. Two commissions. Why? Why? What forces are working right here with us right now? What forces are working here? There is, among other forces, at least two things that are working and make possible for anything to be said in this country. But when you are going to say any, any lie, any deceiveness, any deceit that has, can, can be committed and be told through television and radio and through the news media, but at the time that you as a Christian stand up against it, they will cross you if they call. The same news media, the same television, the same radio, the same newspaper, they will cross you, they will slander you, they will accuse you, they will set you up, they will frame you up. When you stand for the truth, that is what they will do. Now what powers are at work right now, we'll see. Verse 5. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him have a pair of balance in his hands. The Jesuits has already from the beginning that control that is so indispensable to the Roman Catholic institutions in order to move, in order to work, in order to perform this job fulfilling God's prophecies. Yes. They need economy. They need control of the economy. They not only need political power, as we see before, we cannot go over again, but we will go as we are uh, needed to go uh, within the time, and the, all the details that are needed to enlighten you about the greatest conspiracy and economy that the world ever has seen. In Nasser of Lozola knew that the papacy was in bankruptcy. And those very days, as a matter of fact, this is why you have in 1907 and, and, and 1517, one of the reformers like Martin Luther has stopping the cells of bulls. They were so desperate. They were cell dispensations and bulls that are called grants, can be grants on real estate. The Pope can give as he did in the past uh, countries, entire countries, to any bisrei or any bisroy or any king or any emperor because he owned the land of the world. But bulls are used to grant other things, not only physical things, but spiritual things. Bulls are given in order for a pope to decide to grant you as a drunk, as a criminal, as a drug addict, the way to heaven if you pay enough. You don't have to change. You don't have to uh, be forgiven or redeemed by Christ at all. At the minute that you want to get to heaven without Christ, and you know what part of heaven you will go. That is what the popes never said, what part of heaven they promise you. Yes, they grant bulls for you to get to heaven. This is why Martin Luther raised up. Over 500 years ago, this same conspiracy was at work. He was granting the enter of heaven of anyone that can give money. The more money that you put into the arts of the papacy, the more life you can have. As a matter of fact, if you perhaps because your crimes and your transgressions and your sin will spend in purgatory one million years trying to purify yourself through the flames of the purgatory because you die as a good Catholic. Now, listen well, good Catholics. Good Catholics, I'm not talking about bad Catholics, 
because the Pope has no sympathy for them. But for good Catholics, they have the purgatory, no heaven. That comes later, after you pay for good masses. And the more that you pay, the faster you go out of the purgatory. But who says that any time in history, any time, at any given moment, in any place in the Roman Catholic doctrine, you are promised or you are given at least a promise that you can go heaven immediately if you die as a Catholic. Where? Where is that teaching? Where is that teaching? On the contrary, you have seven sacraments that already are telling you, a stop, a stop. Because it's not that easy. You better get enough grace through these seven sacraments. Because they are defined not only but decreed by the consul, including the consul of Trent and ratified by the Vatican consul the second, the originator of the ecumenical and charismatic movement. By these very consuls of unity and law, listen what has been ratified has been ratified by this very consul that yes these seven sacraments are the only seven channels of grace what that means is that you can still profess and to know Christ you can still profess and to believe in God you can still profess and to have a very good wonderful Christian life and you are still damned and bound to hell. Because purgatory is nothing more, nothing less than hell. But it is a masquerade. It is another betrayal for you. It is another act of treason against your soul. That you are still expecting until the very last minute, the last second of your life on earth. Is still expecting from the priest to take your confession and give you the last right. That he will be praying for your soul as you shall go. To go to the purgatory. To rest and purify. The years of purification that you were not able to pay here. Then the bulls are used to free these people, some of them including the souls of the Pope. Now that is interesting. That while the Pope has that power to set free people from the purgatory, they are still praying for the souls of a lot of popes. You see, the devil plays smart, but he is very stupid. You see, he condemned himself. It happened like a Jew after he betrayed the Lord. And nobody went to Jude and kill him. He went and killed himself. You cannot play with the truth. It's too dangerous. That is a game that I will never advise you to play. Because it's no game at all. It's only in your mind. It's only in the mind of the Pope and the mind of the Roman Catholic institution that they can play the grace of Jesus Christ his grace is a gain for your salvation. That is horrifying. Economy. Yes, we are dealing with economy. One of the greatest weapons of this institution. How they amalgamate these treasuries. How they are able today, at this point today, to have, how they have managed today to have Ten times, ten times, the gold reserves above all the gold reserves of all the nations and governments of the earth. You see, ten times over, you got all the gold reserves in the world, and by the time you get them together, the Vatican have ten times over how they did manage, while purgatory is one of those treasures. Entire fortunes, entire wealth has been left through the fear that the priests of Rome play on the soul that is dying. I did it myself. And many times I prayed to God after I was saved whether I was forgiven from such a transgression. Because I did persuade a lot of wealthy people to leave all the wealth to the church, so-called, in order 
for prayers to be said for their soul the rest of the life. Well, what happened? When they had to decide to leave that wealth in order for masses to be said continuously for their soul, they forgot even of their wife, their children, and everybody else. The wealth went everything to the arts of the Vatican. They're still happening right now. Yes. Tremendous. But before the doctrine of the purgatory, you have a legacy that was left by Constantine the Emperor. And the economy and the Roman Catholic institution is twofold. They call the sacraments the economy of the grace, the process of the sacraments. Partaking of the sacrament means that each time that you partake of a sacrament, you have the possibility of getting so much amount, a little amount of grace in order to be saved. The institution never know how much grace you're going to need to be saved. Therefore, you must practice more and more and partake more as often as possible of sacrament because nobody knows how much grace you are going to need to get saved. A slavery is the point. You will be there forever, not only, but even after you depart, without no knowing there was not effect, no mass, no sacraments, and your soul. No effect at all. The other side of the economy is the one that not only produce these so-called mystical powers and spiritual help, but is the economy, literally speaking, the economical transactions of the Roman Catholic institution. Chapter 18 of the book of Revelation says that she is the mother of the merchants of the earth. What that means, that even, ha, huh, you said that I am not talking right? Well, let me tell you that at this point that I'm speaking to you, the Vatican have transactions in every, I mean every, every business in this world. And I'm not talking about real estate alone. I'm not talking about banks alone. I'm not talking about insurance companies alone. I'm not talking about um, uh, buildings of ships and autos and factories of everything that you can name. I'm talking about even the mafia. I'm talking about drugs. I'm talking about opio. I'm talking about morphine. I'm talking about marijuana. That is what I'm talking about. The greatest wealth today in modern day is coming from the mafia, the administrators of the economy of the Jesuits and the underworld. This is high. This is why you have their headquarters in Sicily. And they've always been there after the pirates were another experiment by the Jesuits and the Dominicans to get the ships in the sea and all the sea and rob them from the gold that they transport. You thought that the pirates were working alone? They never did work alone. They were trained in the same island where the mafia has been trained and initiated way back. When the mafia in this country has started their business of transporting people, no opio, no marijuana, no morphine, people. Catholic people to invade this country against the laws of immigration, to invade this country with Catholic people by the millions and millions. Yes. Now you understand what the role of immigration is all today. It's interesting to know that how difficult for Christians even to come to this country, but how easy for Catholics it is that even there are laws ready to pass to even recognize all the illegal immigrants in this country, six million strong, 95% Roman Catholics. And the population of Roman Catholics in this country is growing without limit, year after year. And you never knew where they came from. Yes, economy has played different roles throughout the ages, through different ways and different sanctions. One of them was the black slavery. Who were the masters? Oh, you said, well, some people, they went there and they bought the black, but who? 
who control these areas in Africa? Who control you Roman Catholic missionaries in Africa? Yes. Strange enough, they're not even in Ruth. And that series that came on television, the Roman Catholics do not show by no reason at all. Strange enough. Who were the slave masters? Who were? Who negotiated? Who profited from that tragedy and history? The arcs of the Vatican. We have not time for the details that even documents are here in this country. But there seems to be that the economy went on and on and on. And certainly, while the Pope declared bankruptcy, they have ten times over the economy of the world government. Listen to this again in prophecy. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him have a pair of balances in his hands. Not only economy, as you see in verse 6, but now jurisprudence, what that means, justice, legislation, two important things. Not only political power, but you need something else. You need economy and laws. That is all what you need. That is all what you need. You need money and you need laws. Because even when you have money and laws are legislated, then, regardless of the money you have, if these laws are legislated, they can stop you from doing what you do with the money. And eventually, you will be left out of every cent by law. Huh. But you got to have the balance. You have to have jurisprudence. You have to have the laws. You have to legislate for the laws that are proper to cover up, like it has been covered up, the greatest crime in history in this country. And one of the tracts of Pastor Tony Alamo, that has been pointed out. The fact that today in this country, one of the federal agencies in this country is so Catholic today, as most of them, including the Internal Revenue Service, is so Catholic, is so servant of the interests of the Vatican in this country, that not only has protected all the millions and billions of dollars that are going through secret channels into the archives of every Roman Catholic parish, through the justification of federal grants for rehabilitation centers and so on, Rehabilitation center. How uh, what a priest of Rome can rehabilitate anybody? What what rehabilitation? They sell the drugs. They have factories right in this country, not in Spain, not in Russia, not in China, not in Cuba, not in Colombia or Mexico. Here in the United States, the greatest distillers of liquor belongs to the most greatest religious order, the Christian brothers. La Salle, Benedictine, not to name the rest. We won't have time. So in fact, when even their monks are not sufficient to get drunk and to destroy the homes of this country through the liquor, then they will have laymen, they will do so, like uh, Kennedy's father, borrowing the money from the Vatican to have one of the greatest distillers of whiskey in the country, and many others. Yes. You say, what? Yes. Among others, the Federal Trade Commission, and then you have some other federal agencies, like the Labor Commission, that if they were serious about protecting the interests of America, if they were serious about protecting the interests and the welfare of the people of America, they will be right now Canceling and closing and locking the door of every convent, of every monastery, of every industry owned by the Vatican in this country. That is where they will go. But they go after you, a Christian. They maybe made a mistake and you're filing in contact for 10 cents and they claim $10. They go after you. Because they even have instructions and guidelines about who they go after too. 
Do you really believe this deceit that they go by numbers and by, and by alphabet? No, no, by a list that the Jesuit order passed on to them every month throughout the year. I challenge them. I have enough proof and evidence to bring forth before a court of law in this country. That will be the job to do. That will be the job to perform. In order to free this country, in order to free the Christian people of these judgments and these curses, they will do that if they did know God. If they knew God, they will be doing this. They will uncover this very conspiracy prophesied by God himself taking place before our own eyes now. They have a pair of balance in his hand. Oh yes, they did it already. They did it because whatever is left in this country of the constitution is no longer the Christian constitution that this country inherited by the very pilgrims, the settlers in the northeast of this coast of this country, persecuted by the Roman Catholic institution in their countries. Yes, whatever is left from that constitution, Washington was already that first agent of the Jesuit that early as that. Is why you have that monument in Washington Square. The first symbol of betrayal, the first symbol of negotiation with the Vatican, surely has that. Now, the Jesuit has not been at work in this country overnight. Not overnight, no. He's taken this country overnight, yes, if you do not awake in Christ Jesus. You can use all the method and you can be the most patriotic person all over. But let me tell you that as a Catholic, you call yourself a patriot, you call yourself American. Do you know that you already have betrayed even the name of America? Do you know that you have betrayed your own American citizenship and your own right, birthright? Do you know that by then, when you were baptized, and that baptismal, satanic baptismal, already you were not only given to Lucifer as an offering to Satan, but you were given by that rites and that ritual of exorcism and perversion of the gospel. You were given to the Vatican. You were given as a child, as a boy, as a girl. You were given to possession, to be possessed by the Pope. That is why when he came, he said, John Paul II wants you. <gasps> oh, he could not spell it more clear. It seems like nobody understood. I want you. He kissed the land. That is what he was saying. This land is mine. The Jesuit has swear that that will be accomplished. That was even in Ignatius of Lozola's mind before this country in 1610 was established under the foundation of the word of God. Yes. He said to Pope Paul III, I bring you and before thee Holy Father and Holy God. He said that the statements are in files on the Vatican. All the manuscripts are there. All his memories are there. As my God and my Father, I have I been sent, I have been sent to you to liberate you from the curses and heresies of Protestantism. We not only are going to set our church free forever, but I'm going to be through this constitution and the implementation of what is here. And if you want to know what he has in his constitution, is this program that you have there. And prophecy. All the program. See how I knew it? Intellectually, before I became a Christian, I knew not the God has to speak about Yes, there was. He put before him 
all the ways and methods to conquer the world. This is why the Holy Spirit said that he went out, he went forth to conquering and to conquer. Conquering and to conquer. That he's out. Right now he is out. He is out. As a matter of fact, he is out more desperate than any other pope in history. Certainly, the economy is one of the big roles, one of the big weapons. If it, these agencies and many others were serious about this, they will not be a Catholic in their midst. Ah, oh, it's too hard, too difficult. He will not be a Catholic because you as a Catholic, Right now, in any federal state or local agency working for a government, whether it's United States or any other government, you will not be serving the interests of that country, even so that is your country. You cannot because you are bound to laws of canon laws above the constitutions of any country. You were baptized, you were exorcised, you were given as not only as a member of a Roman Catholic institution, as a religious institution, you were given and possessed as a Roman citizen right there. And your baptism, you become automatically a Roman citizen. You do not only belong to the, to the institution as a religious body, you now are a member of a political state and of a nation whose leader is not the president of the United States as an American. Your leader, your president, is the Pope of Rome, whosoever is in office. But you have been brought not only to have a new country, a new constitution and a new president, but a new pledge. You pledge from now on through liturgy, through sacraments, through canon laws. If you reach that position of being a professional, like a doctor, like an attorney, like a, a juror, like a, a judge, like a, a president, like a governor, like a senator, like a mayor, any, any professional, any architect. They are bound to canon laws in their way of living, in their way of business. Certainly, that is why even Christians and the Church of Christ must know who is what attorneys they deal and who is the doctor that is taking care of you, who is the hospital that you go into, because the people there, they are bound now to constitutions not to rules, not to humanity, much less to Christ. They are bound to canon laws. They are trying to bring about this kingdom, the kingdom of the Antichrist, believing that is Christ's kingdom. They may be ignorant, they may be distorted, they may be blind, they may be drunk, but that is what they are doing. And whether they know it or not, you should not be in their way. The only time that I advise and admonish you to be in their way is when you bring then the gospel of The only time that I advise and admonish you to be in their way is when you bring then the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Do it soon. Do it soon. The soon the better. Yes. Is this gospel that is protecting even our economy, the economy of the Christian people? Because law has already changed in this country. As a matter of fact, it used to be the common law and operation here. And you have not even noticed to the point that even in a school of laws, students are not even learning in this country that the laws in this country, the basic laws of this country have already disappeared, have already evaporated, have already faded away, has been fading away throughout 200 years almost, a step by step. What you find in a school, in, in laws, a school of law, as a matter of fact, it will be interest for you to know that the greatest law schools in this country are in the hands of the Jesuits right now, if you were not aware. But the greatest 
a schools of economy are in the hands of the Jesuits too. How that could ever happen? How, how? Already happened. Then, common law is no longer, is no longer working. Now is Roman law. One of the inheritance of the Roman Empire left to the Roman Catholic institution. Roman law. That never came from God's word. It came from the center of hell, replacing, objecting, rejecting God's law to rule men. Yes, every step of the way, your legislators are involved in that conspiracy every 24 hours around the clock. Now, are you surprised? No! As a Christian, you cannot be surprised. As a non-Christian, you better be ready for the greatest shock, not surprise, shock. Because you yourself will have no protection even that you are making a contribution. Your dilemma is that you want to be an American and you want to be Catholic, and you cannot be both. As you cannot be unchristian and Christian, impossible. As light and darkness cannot, cannot combine, they can be next one to the other. I mean next, not even one over the other in that sense, but one next to the other. They can come as close as confronting each other. But you see, when night arrives, the daylight go. Physical laws not only, but spiritual laws has taught us from the beginning. The light and darkness cannot mix together. Yes, there is conspiracy at work. Yes, there is conspiracy at work, and there is only one. There is only one. Now, let's go to chapter, oh, verse 7. And when he have opened the fourth seal, I hear the voice of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I look, at, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that set on him was death, and her follower with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. Now you have the four together. He said then, power was given unto them. Already the conclusion of these commissions and these writers is they all are one. Communism, Catholicism, Papism, and Catholicism as well. There is no, never has been division. And all what they have produced, we never have a space or time to list the thousand, thousand of things that have come out of her as mother of harlot and the mother of abominations of the earth. What she has produced, what she has conceived throughout the century, there is no even time and space here to list that. Power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with thought and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Certainly there's no hope within the Roman Catholic institution. That is the tragic conclusion. Cannot be more tragic right now. One of the most clear and dramatic acts before the eyes of the world that even so there has been so covered up the reality is so clear as the light of the sun. And you know which one is among many others? The fact that communism is at work as never before, preparing the way, preparing the way to give the land that they conquer, the people they embrace and slay under the feet of the Pope of Rome, not to the Russians. The Russians already have negotiated that business. Where's the Vatican? Through the Jesuit orders, you saw where the communists came from and the founders. You already saw that before. Now, let me give you a clear picture of what most people cannot see, even so when it's so clear and so bright before our eyes. Where is communism right now? Where is communism? And what countries? Three quarter part of the population of the world. Three quarter. I mean, not just one or half. Three 
part of the world under communist power and the other part of the world just about to fall. I mean, regardless of Mr. Reagan program and ballistic. <laughs> regardless, because it is prophecy that we're dealing with. His prophecy. And all his program, he never has mentioned there is something more powerful than all the ballistic intercontinentals or atomic bombs and all that stuff. There's something more powerful. There's something more powerful. And it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the gospel of love, if he were given the freedom that we don't have, and you better believe it, we do not have. If he were, were given the freedom, Already the Christian church has been deprived from the freedom to preach the pure gospel of Jesus Christ. I said already. I'm not talking about a son and future of great tribulation because that is a fake. It's a fair tale. We are in tribulation now. We are in the midst of tribulation. What happens is that you are not, if you are a Christian, you are not taking the position. You are not serving Christ as he called you to serve him. But if you want to know what time of history you live in and under what prophets you are on right now, start living your Christian life as Christ has called you to do. And your business, and your school, and your work, a star complying with Christ's principle and dealing with government. A star complying with Christ's principle. And you will see where you ended up right now. Christian schools are being closed. The pure, truly Christian school. I'm not talking about a bunch of so-called private Christian schools that are as Catholic as the Catholics themselves, regardless of their names of their denomination. I don't care how fundamental they are. They are teaching the children first. Textbooks, they are originated by Roman Catholic author. Second, they are bringing into Christian schools, so-called, even the most fundamental, all the holidays of the Roman Catholic institution, including Christmas, St. Valentine's Day, and so on and so on. And closing the doors of the school during the so-called Holy Week. What is this? Where do you see the apostles calling the Christian to close their, close their teaching of any of these arts? Where? Where? But tradition, yes. But not the apostles. Much less Christ. That when he gave to the church instruction to celebrate in his memory something, he do not say, celebrate in memory of me, my birth. He do not say, take one day a year in memory of me and celebrate my entering in Jerusalem or my crucifixion or my judgment or my death or even my resurrection. He said, meet together. The only calendar that I know after Jesus saved me from all this conspiracy and memory of me around the table. Yes, you pay for your children's education and then they kick them out three months out of the year. And beside the three months out of the year, then they call Christians and they go by the liturgical calendar of the Roman Catholic institution, forgetting even the names of the martyrs and saints, forgetting even the names of the Protestant reformers, not even making memory of those who said the blood that you and I could have this Bible in this country today. Yes, they have dishonored every legacy. Not only they have dishonored Christ and his gospel, Certainly, your own indifference most of the time are helping that cause. You better awake. Get up and live. Live a lie and don't pretend to live death because death cannot be lived. It's impossible. It's a paradox. Get into reality. Live life. Yes, that black horse and his rider has brought so much curses, so many curses in our midst, in our society, in our country, and to every country. 
Yes, through government manipulation. Chapter 18, chapter 17, both chapter of the book of Revelation, the Holy Spirit revealed that the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. That is concordat. That is the prophetical term for the ecclesiastical term. Fornication is a concordat between the Vatican and the countries of the earth. One is getting ready for the United States. To the president, the you less believe that ever could happen. The one always that you thought there was even a Christian. But nevertheless, you never knew that was trained by the Jesuit since he was 19 years old and prepared for today's task. They take time. They do. You believe that everybody that show up and law with the Roman Catholic institution, like those greatest leaders and denominations, and those greatest evangelists that suddenly are in love, embracing each other before the eyes of the public, no more in secret. That means that they were doing so in secret. You're wrong if you saw that that happened just overnight. Nobody fall in love overnight that way. No, even the most romantic people, it takes some time, you know and take some things too. Yes, we are facing prophecy being fulfilled before our own eyes. But nevertheless, tragedy is all over. But we are the most privileged people on earth. We are seen and we are here and we are facing the very things that the prophet even before Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior came has spoke about including the prophet Daniel and we are witnessing the very things that they spoke the very things that they prophesied and even our Lord Jesus and then his apostles they were so anxious to see what they were preaching being fulfilled. They were so anxious to face uh, that they were almost to the point to believe that they will be taken away, that Christ will come back immediately after he went up. But they never see what you see now. And I see that means that the day is getting close, very close. Is our hope. Listen. And when he hath opened the fourth seal, I hear the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I look and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. I was driving a car, I was not driving, pardon me, Pastor Pilkington, a very excellent man. Uh, he was driving me in North Carolina uh, while I was preaching. There, I was giving my testimony about three years ago, over. And something happened suddenly. And we were, I was in the front seat with this uh, pastor, and my wife was in the back seat with my boy, uh, my son, Albertito. And Albertito already uh, uh, has a wake up to the scripture from very early age. As a matter of fact, I used to teach and pray with him while uh, was in her mother's womb. So happened that immediately after he was born, the communication was so tight and so well understood that I could read and talk with my son without not speaking or not understanding according to the mental development of his age. Nevertheless, the power of the Holy Spirit make that possible. Then, being a firm believer, and being so anxious to know there was my first son to be Tao, my first son to be Tao in the scripture. I have no that privilege. I was not Tao in the scripture. I was not Tao in the gospel. And I remember what the Holy Spirit told Paul through Timothy, uh, I mean, uh, uh, through, uh, Timothy through Paul, when he said, from your childhood you have learned the scripture which can make you wise for salvation in Jesus Christ. And I was, learned, I was taught the catechism, but not the gospel, not the scripture, not the Bible. 
Now I have my son. I cannot wait until he talk. I cannot wait until he develop his understanding of every meaning in the scripture. I rush and I rush because it's getting too late. As I spoke, the Lord always has honored me in that because his understanding was so clear that by being nine months old, he was in that car. And as we were driving in the freeway, he called me from the back seat and said, Papi, he already nine months old. He was speaking English better than I do. So my father, if you hear my son, he speaks perfect English and perfect pronunciation that I cannot do even with 20 years that I have practiced English since I was a Jesuit, as a matter of fact. Then you will see this. He speaks English. Who taught that English that he speaks? He is not going to no school. So my father, he will not go. I'm teaching him myself at home. Then as I'm teaching him at home, all the English that I can teach is my broken English. But he will be able to correct me when I do the wrong pronunciation. He said, no, this is not the way. You pronounce this way. And I am the teacher. But he know that I'm doing wrong. I'm pronouncing wrong. Then, suddenly, he was nine months old when immediately he called and said, Papi. And he speaks English among the English speaking people, but he speaks Spanish among the Spanish speaking people. Then we were there among the English speaking people, and he said, Papi, Daddy, look, look the Pope. I said, Look what? Eh? Look the Pope. And I said, No. The Pope is not here, my son. He said, yes, here's the Pope. And I laugh about, and everybody laugh about without even understanding what was happening. But then suddenly, uh, he insists, and uh, we forgot, and we were driving on. And suddenly, he now, instead of calling me, he grabbed me from the back, and with his two little hands, he was sitting on the laps of her, his mother, and uh, he was close enough to get two hands around my neck, and he forced me to look to the right. He said, look, look, puppy, look now the Pope. You see, I told you, here is the Pope. And I look around, I said, I don't believe it. Is the Pope after me after all? Uh, I said, no, <laughs> he's sending a lot of people ahead, but I don't believe that he will finally come. <laughs> I look around looking for the Pope. I firmly believe that, that he saw something real, that I was actually looking for the real Pope, for the person of the Pope. What I see next to us was a big, tall truck, pulling a truck, a big truck that was a smash, completely smashed, right from the front, almost to the rear of the body of that big truck. That was a horrifying thing. No doubt that death occurred there. And there was, that I look at, and then I said, oh, that is, he is not pronouncing well, you see, the problem of pronunciation. He said, you mean a tow truck. That is what you mean. He said, no, puppy. He's no. He's the Pope. I said, my son, this is a tow truck. He said, yes, I know it's a tow truck, but this is the Pope. He's pulling. And I said, what do you say? The Pope is pulling. Come with me to this revelation here. And I look, and behold a pale horse, and his name the certain king was Death, and hell follow with him. There is no doubt about that any Roman Catholic you can prove it by the doctrines and teachings of Christ. You can prove it by the doctrines and teachings of the apostle. You can prove it by the teachings and revelations of the prophet. That no Roman Catholic, as a Roman Catholic, will ever be able to be a Christian. That means he will never be able to live eternally with Christ. There is only one hope for a Roman Catholic. Only one hope as a Roman Catholic is not even the purgatory, is death and hell. 
That is the promise of the Pope to the entire Roman Catholic institution. 800 million strong. And outside her, many of her daughters called by different names, even Protestant names and Pentecostal names. Her daughters are going back. There is no hope within her. No hope. Stand up with me. Hallelujah. But there is hope. There is hope for you. And Jesus Christ. You see. How you dare to reject. How you dare to debate. To discuss. To even reason about it. How? And your loneliness. And your insecurity. How you even dare to stop to debate an issue. When you need life. Eternal life in Christ. Come out. You people of God. Christians all over. Pray. Now is your turn. You pray now. Pray for your father. As we conclude this evening. We have doing this throughout every evening. Throughout this week. You pray for your father. There's still a Catholic. You pray for your mother, they're still a Catholic. Pray for your husband, for your wife, for your children, for your boys and girls, for your relatives all over. They're still Catholics. Pray for them now under the conviction of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray with the Holy Spirit now. Intercede seriously for the first time ever. Intercede for their salvation. Intercede before God in the name of Christ for their redemption, for their forgiveness, for their life. Do it now with faith, with faith. And God will honor you. Do it now. Do it. Pray for them. Intercede for them. Jesus said in the garden of Gethsemane. Pray for those who shall believe by the word. By their word. Now pray for them. You have gear. You have heard the message of Christ this evening. You among us. You that are not a Christian among us as Christians. We are calling you out. Because God has called us out. And he's calling you out. Come out of her, my people, he said. Come out of her, my people. There is no hope there where you are. You directly or indirectly, you may say that you are not even a Catholic. But let me tell you that you are being affected by Catholicism right now. I can prove it to you. God has proven already that. You are being affected by Catholicism. Come out of her. Hallelujah. Come out of her. In obedience to Jesus Christ's invitation. Come and get saved. Come and be forgiven of your transgressions and your sins. One once for all, once in your life, do it and will be forever. He said, whosoever believe in me shall not see death but life. Come, that makes the whole difference. Now I invite you to come forward. As I invite you to come forward and to profess and to confess Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Redeemer. Don't stay there. You come forward. Walk out. Come out. As a sign, as a symbol that you have obeyed God's call. That you do obey God's call. That you do not reject His call. Come out. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Comply with Christ's loving invitation of getting saved. Come out of her, my people. Regardless Regardless of the way or the form that you have been living, you come out of her right now. As you keep praying, people of God, help assist those around you, next to you. They may not be Christian. They may not have security of their salvation. They may not have life, eternal life in Christ. You may profess to believe in God. But the Bible said that even demons believe and tremble. You may say that you know Christ. But the Bible said under the Holy Spirit. There were anyone that said that he know Christ. And do not keep his commandment. He is a liar. And liar will not inherit the kingdom of God. 
you better come out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do it. Do it. Do it because you need salvation. Because you need eternal life. Because you need protection in the society you live in. You need the protection of your Savior. You need the protection of your Lord and King Jesus Christ. You come out. Come out as I go into prayer. Come forward and we will be praying for you. Hallelujah. still open. Come There's down tonight. Someday, you know, we're all going to stand before the living God, every one of us. Yes, we're all going to give account of our actions here on the face of this earth. The this service you've been through tonight, these words you've heard will be played back before you, before God. Jesus said you must There's be born again. At the cross for you. You won't have your friends yes, with you. Room you won't have anyone beside you when you stand before God. It'll just be you and God, the naked soul, standing before God. And if there's even one sin on your soul, God says he will cast it into hell. And God says in his word, the Bible, the only way that you can be saved, the only way that you can have those sins taken off your soul is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, by having it applied to your soul. Yes, there's Jesus said if you're ashamed of him on this side of eternity, that he will be ashamed of you before God and his holy angels. Come down to the altar now. Get on your knees and ask the Lord to come into your heart. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. You have come down to accept the Lord as your Savior. Just repeat this prayer after me and say it to God. Mean it with all your heart. And God, the Lord Jesus Christ, will come down. He will save your soul. Now just repeat after me. My Lord and my God, have mercy on my soul, a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. I believe that he died on the cross and shed his blood for the forgiveness of all my sins. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead by the power of the Holy Ghost and that he sits at the right hand of God knowing everything I do. I open the door of my heart, Lord Jesus, and I invite you into my heart. Wash all my sins away in the precious blood you shed for me. You will not turn me away, Lord Jesus. I know because your word, the Bible, says so. And I believe your word, the Bible. Therefore, I know that you've heard me. And I know that you've answered me. And I believe that I'm saved. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Now just raise up your hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your Savior. Praise you for the soul, O Lord and God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Savior. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Savior. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, our Lord and Master, Lord and God, we thank and praise you tonight, Lord, for coming down in this service, for walking up and down the aisles, 
of this church and, and being here with us tonight, O oh Lord and God, for touching our hearts, Lord and God, for the message you gave to us tonight through Brother Alberto Rivera, O oh Lord and God. Lord, we thank you for sending him to us, O oh Lord and God, this last week, O oh Lord and God, and for blessing us with this great knowledge that he has, O oh Lord and God, of the great whore that you've written of, O oh Lord and Master, and spoke of in these last days, O oh Lord and God. Lord, bless him, keep him, build a wall of fire around him, Lord, as he goes his way, making his courageous stand for you, O oh Lord and God. Lord, and we'll be praying for him, O oh Lord and God. Lord, we want to thank you tonight for the soul that was saved. Give him a burning desire, O oh Lord and God, in his heart to serve you, Lord, to lay down his life, to take up the cross, and to follow after Jesus Christ. Lord, because you said the laborers are few and the harvest is great. Lord, and we ask that you bless the food, Lord, that you bless the hands that prepared it, that you bless the hands that brought it up the hill, O oh Lord and God. Give all the travelers tonight traveling grace, Lord and Master. Protect them as they go their ways home, O oh Lord and God, on the highways and on the byways. Lord, and we ask above all, if there's anyone here tonight, Lord, that has not accepted you as their Savior, Lord and God, that you trouble them. Lord and Master, that you give them no rest, that you give them no peace, O oh Lord and God, until they come to their knees before you, Lord and God, and accept you as their personal Savior. Lord, we give you the praise, the glory, and the thanks in Jesus' holy name. And the whole congregation says, Amen. You're dismissed.